Hi guys, in today's video we're gonna be discussing about the Thomas Hunt Morgan's gene recombination and gene mapping. Let's go! How would you feel if you had to be the one to challenge Gregor Mendel's paradigm shifting loss of inheritance? Yet, Thomas Hunt Morgan did exactly this and in the process made by gene mapping possible so let's gonna figure it out in 1911 while studying the chromosome theory of heredity biologist thomas hunt morgan had a major breakthrough morgan occasionally noticed that linked threats would separate meanwhile other threats on the same chromosome showed little detectable linkage morgan considered the evidence and proposed that the process of closing over or recombination might explain his result Especially, he proposed that the two paired chromosomes could cross over to exchange information. Today, we know that recombination does indeed occur during prophase of meiosis. Okay, so let's go to the figure 1. It is the recombinations and gamete productions as what we can see here. Uh, Eumologous chromosomes pair in prophase 1. And this one, a crossover may occur. So in meiosis 2, if no crossover occur, all chromosomes in the gametes will have non-recombinant chromosomes. This is where two different gametes can arise. And in a cross, if a crossover may occur in meiosis 2, half of the gametes will have non-recombinant chromosomes, the solid orange, solid orange and solid green, and half will have recombinant chromosomes mixed green and orange. And the recombinant will have four different gametes can arise. When proposing the idea of closing over, Morgan also hypothesized that the frequency of recombination was related to the distance between the genes on the chromosomes and the interchange of genetic information broke the linkage between the genes. Morgan imagined that genes on chromosomes were similar to pearls on a string. In other words, they were physical objects. The closer two genes were to one another on a chromosome, the greater uh, their chance of being inherited together. In contrast, genes, genes located farther away from one another on the same chromosome were more likely to separate during recombination. Therefore, Morgan's uh, correctly proposed that the strength of linkage between two genes depend upon the distance between the genes on the chromosome. So this proposition became the basis for construction of the earliest maps of the human genome. Let us cite this example of figure 2 in the allele recombination. As we can see in the P generations, capital letter E, A, capital letter BB times the formation of small letter AA and small letter BB. Therefore, they produced in, uh, gametes of capital letter AB and small letter AB. In the fertilization in the iPhone generation, big letter A, A, and big letter B, small letter B, and the gamete formations and the left sides, it produced the original combinations of allele like P generation. On the right side, it produces a new combinations of alleles where capital letter A and small letter B and small letter B and cap small letter A and capital letter B. Therefore, through combinations, gametes contain new recombination of alleles. This combination also is the sorting of alleles into new combinations following the formation of gametes over two generations. So, as what we have seen in the figure 2, uh, it shows how combinations can produce new allele combinations in the lower right. There was this new... Soon after Morgan presented his hypothesis, Alfred Henry Sturtevant, imagine a 19-year-old Columbia University undergraduate who was working with Morgan, realized that if the frequency of closing over was related to distance, one could use this information to map out. So, Sturvant is Sturtevant is the one uh, to construct the first genetic yeah. map. So, information to map out the genes on a chromosome. After all, the further apart two genes were on a chromosome, the more likely it was that 
these genes would separate during recombination. Therefore, as Sturt Ivan uh, explained it, the proportion of uh, crossovers could be used as an index of the distance between uh, any two factors. Collecting a stack of laboratory data, Sturt Ivan went home and spent most of the night drawing the first chromosomal linkage map for the gene, gene, genes located on the X chromosome of fruit flies. In figure 3, Sturt Ivan's Drosophila gene map. In Sturt Ivan's gene map, six threads are arranged along a linear chromosome according to the relative distance of each front thread B. Traits include yellow body, which is capital letter B, white eyes, which is C, capital letter C, and capital letter O, vermilion eyes, which is capital letter P, miniature wings, which is uh, capital letter R, and rudimentary wings, which is capital letter M. When creating his map, Sturdy Van started by placing six X-length genes in order. Uh, B was a gene for black body color. C was a gene that allowed color to appear in the eye. Eyes, flies with the P gene had vermilion eyes instead of ordinary red. And flies with two copies of recessive O gene had eyes that appeared a shade known as eucin. The R and M factors both affected the wings. And Sturt Ivan placed C and O at the same point because they were completely linked and were always inherited together. In other words, he never saw any evidence for a combination between C and O. Sturt Ivan then placed the remainder of the genes. In the order shown in figure 3, uh, crossover events were tracked by examining the F2 progeny and crosses for new phenotypes. Now let's go to the divisions from expected results revealed genetic interference by Sturtevant. Sturtevant also described the fact that for genes that were distant from one another, there was a discrepancy in, in, the, in the predicted number of crossovers. So for example, the distance between B and M on his map was 57.6. His recombination data using those two genes, however, did not suggest this distance. Instead, Sturtevant found 260 recombinants in 693 male progeny which when plugged into the equation. So produced of a result of 37.6, how then Sturtevant explained the division? In short, Sturtevant realized that double recombination events could occur if genes were far apart. Moreover, not only did Sturtevant's data suggest that double cross crossing over occurred, but it's also suggested that an initial crossover event could uh, inhibit subsequent events by way of phenomenon Sturtevant, referred to as the interference. In addition, if two genes are on the same chromosome and are far enough apart that they undergo recombination at least 50% of the time, the genes are independently assorting and do not show linkage. So genes independently assort at a distance of 50 cm or more apart. This means that no statistical test would allow researches, researchers to measure linkage. Finally, linked genes do not independently show statistical linkage. Statistical linkage is detected as division from independent assortment that favors the parental gametes. Synthetic genes are genes that are physically located on the same chromosomes whether or not the genes themselves exhibit linkage. So therefore, all linked genes are synthetic, but not all synthetic genes show genetic linkage. So that is all about for this day. Thank you for watching and I hope you know or you have learned something about genetic recombinations and genetic mapping. Hope you guys uh, enjoy event.